Well, good morning, everybody. It is the start to a brand new work day here. I'm downstairs in one of the rooms. As you see, it's full of forms and bamboo. And uh, Mock Mock and I, we are continuing to pull electrical. We're gonna get all the wire pre-pulled inside the conduits up here. And over here to the sub, and over here to the sub panel. We're gonna get everything pulled in here, get it capped off and uh, let them get those forms up on the inside. They're gonna, we're gonna finish out a room, then they're gonna come in and pull the form on the inside of the room. Cause that's about what we're down to. It's just these at the top on the insides in here. So we're gonna pull our wires here. I got one of them, I got them taped together here. One of them looped back that I'll hook this wire into after we finish it. And we're just using these rolls of tie wire. Show them right there, Mike Mike. I'm just using these rolls of tie wire. That's our fish tape. That's what we're using here for fish tape. It works great, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's commonly used. So first, before he pushes this through the conduit, we don't want this little rough end snagging inside the pipe. So simple enough, we're just gonna round it over right there. Make it nice and round. I'm gonna keep the minimum size down if I can. Kind of flat. All right, I think I got it right, right there. Yeah, so now if it comes to a little edge inside the conduit where the PVC glues together, it'll slip right past it. Now Mike Mike can pull that through and when he gets to the other end, I'll tie this on and he'll drag a wire through. Um, is that the one? Yep, that's the one. That ought to be easy enough. There he goes, and I'll let him know when it's down here to the other end. Oh, uh, you, have you got it all the way through yet? And there it is right there. You want to wiggle that, mop, mop, wiggle it a little bit. Pull it, pull it some. Okay, see right there, he's got it. So now all I need to do is tie on to that and we'll pull the wire back through the other way. The first thing I did is push my wires up and up here to the, to the top right here. And now I'm gonna hook onto that wire for the long run and pull it on through. You know what these are, huh? Okay. So, you don't know what this, you've been, You've been doing construction at big jobs and all, big tall buildings. Yeah. How tall buildings have some of them you worked on? Seven, Five, yeah. seven yeah. story, commercial buildings. Yes, sir. And you never, you never saw this then, right? Yes, sir. So I'm just trying to prove a point. Let's see, that's right here. So when they have a connection on wires here in the Philippines, this is super rare. I have just recently seen some of these being sold in like Wilcon and uh, and City Hardware and some others, but a few years ago I didn't see them at all. I mean, not at all. But they're selling them just a few now, and these are very expensive with the bomb right here. All right. So if you want a a ballot buying box item of something you might need in bulk here, good quality wire nuts good quality twist on wire nuts they do sell them here now but it may not be the quality you want and the price is so expensive just for a few of them i was shocked when i saw the prices of them so definitely if you are an expat a foreigner going to come here and build you're a ofw and you're going to come back here and retire or build your home um, man this is what you want I just wrap it with black tape, don't you? When you make the wire connection, just wrap it with tape always, don't you? Yeah, they never use these right here. So uh, I'm gonna use a few of them and I'm gonna tell you why, I'm gonna show you why I'm gonna use a few of them. Up in these makeup boxes, I'm running an earth ground. So I'm gonna run my earth ground uh, to get all the wires the way I need it up and down. 
it's gonna get a little tight in that conduit. So the earth ground, I'm just gonna run a, a splice in it and come down. So this one here, you know, it's uh, it's not gonna be as crucial as one of my other wires. So I am gonna do a twist up inside those boxes on my earth ground, which is something that's very rarely used here too. Very rare. And this will have a grounding rod down in the ground and a large solid copper wire grounding this house. And I was explaining that to Mock Mock too. That's why they're always touch an outlet, touch a refrigerator, touch anything. And you say, oh, grounded, right? Shocked, grounded. That, that's a common word you'll hear, hear here. Grounded, I'm grounded. So I just did a demonstration for Mock Mock. First time you ever seen one of those used, how it's used. What do you think about it? You like it? He was smiling when I was doing it. <laughs> Quick and simple, over with. Not twisting and having to put tape and all of that. So there it is, done and over. You're gonna hit me on color coding on wires. Well, sometimes also in this country, you adjust and you take what you can get. So I went to some of the big suppliers here recently and I went to the small mom and pop stores too. Looking for black and white, you know, that's the main things we use in the U.S., you know, black and white and then a green. We got blue, sir. We got red. We got yellow. We got green. No black, not available. No white, not available. They might have it up in some big gauges, you know, like, uh, you know, like number eight and ten. But that wasn't what I was needing. I didn't need twelves and fourteens. And so uh, sometimes you adjust your color scheme to what you can get. And uh, after going to five places, I finally said, you know what, forget it. Forget it, I'm losing so much time. Uh, it's gonna get its own color scheme. So uh, just adjust and adapt, you know. That's, that's sometimes what you gotta do, just adjust and adapt. Uh, as long as you know, write it inside your boxes. So, nevertheless, just still write your little color code inside there and adjust and adapt. This is not the West. I did just get lucky. I found two boxes of wire that I bought a long time ago here. And so, uh, yay, I got me some, uh, some black and white here. So, I'm going to go to running this in black and white. Yeah, I got to searching around and I said, man, I swore I bought some of that before. And, uh, you know, they I'm not saying they never stock it. It's just hard to find it if they're out of stock. And especially right now, um, materials aren't coming in as fast as they were, you know, during this calamity. Um, even, looks like I was watching uh, an Aussie farming in the Philippines and his suppliers talking about how hard it is to get pig feed right now. And of course, there's another pig farmer that I watch also, and they were having trouble a while back about getting pig feed. It's a continuing problem as the pig farms have wound down. Um, the supplies for pig feed aren't coming in so much. And a lot of that's imported in from other countries. So uh, those, these things happen, they just happen, you know? All you can do is adapt, but I am really happy I just found these rolls of wire. This will get me through some of this now that I can put it the color code that I want. And um, I, don't, I don't have to be so pressured at the moment. You know, I didn't really want to change the color coding on it. And um, now I'm not so pressured. And this will give me some time before I do the upstairs to try to locate wire again. I've got my mic going through here, taking tie wire, tying that conduit right to the rebar because that concrete you know it's heavy when it goes down those walls and stone it can pull and rip our uh, conduit loose or break a box so you really want to tie it down in there good and we heard melinda cussing boy i mean yeah she says some choice words in her native tongue <laughs> and I'm like, I, I hit it over to window see what she's cussing about she cooked her some fish outside this morning that she had bought and she was so excited for that and she left it sitting out there down low with a cover a lid over it but some local dogs done found it and ate her fish boy she is mad said she's gonna go that guy owns the dog so he owes her 200 pesos told her go for it do it 
But uh, she's going to town now. I told everybody here though, that when she gets back, for everybody to agree that Miller is actually the one that ate the fish on break. If we all stick to our story, we can deduct that out of Miller's salary. <laughs> okay. So my Mike and I, we've been continuing pulling wire inside and the crew out here is continuing to do the cantilever beam forms right here. Of course, there's a little bamboo in the way every once in a while. We just have to just chop it out of the way. That's the way it is. So are you finally completely out of screws, Joel? No more? Okay, at lunch I'll go in there and look uh, which boxes we can open now. Oh. Yeah, the long ones. I know I have the long ones in there. It's almost their lunch time. They'll be heading out, have their break. We've all been just... Uh, Doing these little button-up things, you know, and definitely things with the power is very important. So, I want to address another issue here, another um, another question. the The comments still keep coming in, and uh, and I like them. Pour them on in. Ridicule, I don't care. Bring them on in. Good stuff, bad stuff, you know. Uh, what is that? What's that Led Zeppelin song? good times bad times I don't even care I'm trying to remember exactly how those lyrics went you know yeah, you can tell I like music I'm a music nut so back to uh, ongoing uh, just seems like regurgitating <laughs> comment that I get on a regular basis and just got it again you know and it's just like sometimes you just want to go oh we gotta answer this again. Okay, here we go. Again. Oh. Comment was something, I'm not gonna, it's just gonna be ad lib. Uh, something like, your workers would really appreciate it if you would get them a concrete mixer for this big pour. You know, those are, those are feuding words with me. <laughs> Really? I gotta answer this again? Because I like to answer. I do. You see, I'm really big at answering you guys back. I may not always say what you want to hear, but I'm gonna answer back. Nobody ever get offended of my very brash Texas ways, you know? That's it, you know? We're, we're to the point people. We are. Well, yeah, I said, your workers really appreciate you for that. Well, I have something to tell you. Uh, how should I say it? Inde? Voila? Voila? <laughs> if you don't know those words in Filipino, it means no. No, they will not appreciate me for that. You know why? I'm going to tell you why. The very ones that you think that you're defending there, that all oh, them poor boys got to hand mix all that cement. They are asking that I don't get a mixer. You hear that? Listen to that closely. They are asking that I do not get a concrete mixer. Are you sitting wondering why? Think about it for a minute. That's why I've been preaching and preaching and preaching. So when they found out that I was looking into a pump truck and a transit mix, they all got quiet. And it's the only reason I researched it because started to sway with the comments a little bit but then I said you know what 
I'm gonna hold my course. I'm gonna hold my course. These commenters ain't gonna change me. So we dropped it. Plus, it's gonna be expensive, and we don't know what we're gonna get for mix. They say it's 3,500 psi. They say it's 4,000. It might be 2,000. How do you know? You know? How do you know? Am I in there and their company measuring it? And I'm not some big company with a, a construction site with a lab, and we're gonna do a, a sample of that, and we're gonna do a, a pressure test and see if it's the real deal and all. I'm just a little small job right here. So, uh, we can manage our mix, but now you're still wondering why, why, why they don't want a mixer here. Well, I'll tell you why. It's the same reason I've been saying all along. Because they need work. They need work. And if they hand mix it, and we do that job that day, they're going to get paid extra. Yeah, we pay quite a bit of a bonus for that day of pour. But wait. It goes beyond that. On the other side of that fence, over on the far side, is a whole community of people where these where these guys live, where Melinda's family lives. These are Melinda's family, and over there in that community is a whole bunch more Melinda's family, cousins and all, and some that aren't. A lot of them need work. Some of them have jobs, but some of them don't. Some of them have jobs and they want to make extra. Times are hard here right now. Times are hard. It, this country's still locked down. Wow, you might be enjoying your Western freedoms. They can't even go to the neighboring island. They uh, most can't even go to the neighboring province right here on this island. They're just confined to just right here in this Elo Elo province. And even sometimes, some of the brown guy captains will frown even for them to go outside of there. We're still in a lockdown. So many of them have no work. OFWs can't go abroad and work. Yeah. They, they came back in the country and returned. They have no work. So the men in the house that was sitting while the women were in another country doing domestic help, they don't have that money coming there now. Or the women while the man was abroad doing some type of job, a seaman, or there's some seamen still going, but some aren't. Or whatever it is, he was a welder in Saudi or Kuwait and this and that. He's not working there now. Not all of them. And once again, money's got tight. Families have needs. Maybe their savings have started running out. People need work. Things are harder than you know. So for them to get a chance to do something they all know to do, mix this concrete and help pour it and pass a bucket and earn some money, some bonus money, and for this community next door to me here, unlike the OFW, the Siemens, and uh, the welders, and, and all the other people working with a better class job like that, they, that, that money right there, that might make the difference for them to buy some rice, some other, some other things for their family, some basic needs that they need. That might be the difference of them not getting their power cut. So uh, they're happy to come here as a community and hold this big event to pour this concrete, which is something that's not new to them. Might be new to you, because we're so used to everything being so automated in the Western world. But buddy, this isn't the Western world. Sirs and moms, just tell you, this is not the Western world. Um, a lot of that stops from there. It don't matter if you're in India, it don't matter if you're in Bahrain or if you're in Indonesia or if you're in Thailand or Vietnam or Cambodia or Laos uh, I mean I could just keep naming the places this is the way life is in nearly every single one of those countries and there are every one of them and many more many more Pakistan on and on I could just keep naming countries this is life. This is the way it is. And for them to do some labor, to hand make some concrete, it's no sweat to them. It's no sweat. It's a job. It's money. And they're not afraid to work for it. So that is why it's going to happen like it is. And I'm proud for that. I'm proud to give my money to that community rather than give it to that guy that owns 15, 20, 30 big concrete trucks that's contracted with highways and bridges and all kinds of other big buildings going up and all. 
man they got that budget but uh me i'm gonna put my budget over here hope you understand and maybe someday when this project is done i can put this debate to rest the guys don't want me to do that they want to hand mix it and it's just after lunch time and uh i told joel that even though it was clear this morning it was showing that we're going to get afternoon thunderstorms sure enough here it is at lunch and the clouds are moving in uh, we sure might start getting rained on again here in just a bit well i gotta go up here with mop mop and we gotta drill some holes hey do you have that paper up there with the measurements is it down here okay i'll bring it up with me so i gotta go up here and get busy get to work drill some holes where some walls will be later for these downstairs crs in these rooms and uh get some conduit drop get some wire pull and move on with this day so it's been trying to rain on us you see the plywood all wet it's hard to work up here doing all this when it's pouring down on you so right now we are running lights for the downstairs CR down there below in this room and where the little kitchenette's gonna be. So to give you a little idea, that light right there is gonna be a flush LED that's in a shower area down below right there. These two lights right here are gonna be above uh, four foot granite or as they call it here, granite uh, countertop with a sink and so there'll be a mirror right behind those. They're set out enough that your body don't make a shadow. In here we see these holes drill. We're gonna run conduit down and that's where a little wall will be built for the CR later. The restroom, the toilet, the water closet right there. And we need a circuit going down in that wall. One's gonna be for hot water heater. We're gonna go from our sub box right over here run down and it's going to power one of those small little tankless hot water heaters right there and that tankless hot water heater is going to run this room and this little small room as well i ran the hot water over there there's no sense in putting one of its own in this little small room with a tiny little cr over there and then the second hole there is the circuit for these lights right here uh, coming up for the light switches to them the power and for a light switch on the opposite side of the wall lighting up over top of a little kitchenette that's going to be down below another little granite countertop it'll have a little small under the counter uh, apartment size refrigerator right here in this area now i didn't really get that light there centered the way i wanted it because one thing we made a little drop down for the plumbing in our master bath up here above there is a shower shower right in this area and i have a line drawn down there on the plywood where the boundaries to that shower is now, i didn't want any electrical into the ceiling right where that shower is going to be at so i made an adjustment and just offset my box a little bit over to one side for my light and you know that's just little things you might do it's it'd be wiser to have that offset a few inches and it not be centered then it would be for an electrical box to be up underneath a shower pan, correct? So, uh, and so it's gonna be over and away from there. I know right with my pencil marks that I drew out where all these things are. I got measurements rolled into the floor here and all. I know right where that's gonna be. So we don't have to run those little nipples that have the nuts on the end of them into all these boxes. Here in the Philippines, quite a bit they won't use those these boxes are made exactly to fit this conduit see and you slip it in here and you center that and it fits so snug that no cement no concrete no slurry can fit around that it's a perfect fit so we have this box tied we have that box tied now we'll tie this PVC right here to this grid to this grid keeps it up we can still get concrete underneath right here the seal for the ceiling and uh what's nice about not having all of that here and this is a common thing they do here in this country is that those nipples have a lip on the inside of them and when you're pulling your wire it always snags on those things so this is the common way to do it here in the philippines right here 
you put that in there and you pull your wire through so all i need to do to keep any of that from shifting while we're pouring concrete once it's set it doesn't matter anymore um, it's just do a tie and a tie right there it's a brown out in the community right now middle of the day everybody no electricity everybody but us yeah everybody but us it's cloudy you see so we're still producing enough to run our refrigerator wi-fi tv uh, laptop phone chargers you know all those things turn on our led lights run all that and it's maintaining it's not drawing off the batteries at all panels alone even on just rain and clouds is handling it all um, when it's like this and it's already cool air anyway I just switch the air con off we may not need this stone but we're getting this stone because we still got a lot more house to build and the dry season comes and construction picks up it's gonna be very hard to get some of these materials uh, it's gonna be super hard to get some of these materials hey can he can he get up his tires back there so we can keep the stone back not block the street go 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 Yeah, get on. Oh, whoa, right there. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Dump it right there. Ah, uh, it looks good too. Nice stone. Nice. Yeah, man, it looks pretty good. I see like a few little sticks and stuff in it. Just a few little sticks and stuff, but man, nothing too much to complain. We can grab some of that crap out when we're going back. It. It's just the way it is, but it's a pretty good stone, though. I like it. Ask them to clean up. They cleaned up. I have some organized. These are materials we've already pre-cut that we're about to use. So we've been running in for CCTV now, and I kind of put a large coax for that. I mean, a large conduit for that. I mean, it's big right there. And that's them sticking up because I want it easy to be able to pull coax through, and I want it easy to be able to pull power wires through, and I want just in case some different technology or additions later or anything i want to have room to pull some wire through maybe i want two wires coming through that conduit or something you know two sets so uh i don't want wireless cameras i want hard wire cameras and uh nevertheless that's what we're pulling up we got a couple more to do but we are still just continuing on here running conduit running conduit running conduit like i say we got cctv to do and we've got all the electric here everywhere to do and we've got some lighting some exterior lighting to do so uh, we just keep on pushing on step by step it's been another good day i'm gonna finish up here with them for about the last 20 minutes of the work day hope you all enjoyed seeing this process step by step i appreciate the uh, support that you give me on these videos that you give all my work crew my family here this is my family my Maki's my family too in fact I like him a lot don't tell him that though I shouldn't have said that out loud his ears would get big so uh, I just appreciate all the support you give all of us 
I absolutely do. All the positive encouragement and reinforcement and just the nice compliments and uh, the advice, the advice you give, the, the sharing of what you know, I enjoy it. And for any of you that say, oh, don't let the trolls get to you. Well, my trolls aren't like trolls that are causing drama, like, you know, cheesemus drama. They may just say, oh, this ain't gonna work or that ain't gonna work. And it opens up conversations. So I have good trolls. Yeah, they're good trolls. And if they say something ain't gonna work out right or whatever, um, it's a free speech for me. Yeah, I'm not gonna censor you. Speak it, say what it is that you think that I'm not doing right. And I might not be doing it right. And you may help me. So anyone out there that says, oh, you know, don't feed the trolls. Well, these aren't normal trolls. These are just people that are sharing their opinion and they have a right to share their opinion on my channel. And if, if I feel they're wrong, I'll correct why I think they're wrong. And, uh, but I encourage it, keep the topic coming. It, bring, it opens up conversation and we need more of that in this world. We need less saying, don't say your opinion uh, we need less of that and we need more where you can you can say hey I think that it should be like this or that and we can speak all good with each other on it and we can debate and we can say I can say my side you can say your side and then you know something's gonna come out of it good or bad but uh, I will not censor any of my viewers i appreciate every one of you don't ever take anything i say personal i just really want to push that out there and with that i'm going to finish out this day we got a little sunshine got down low below the clouds right here at the end of the day and uh it's going to be a beautiful evening here listen to all them kids playing that's awesome well take care and my mom said he'll see you later <laughs>